This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh. Welcome along. This is the solutions to exercise four, which was about 3D plotting. So question one was all about using the plot three function, which is a built-in MATLAB function for plotting points and lines in 3D space. So part A, a spherical helix. We're told that T ranges from 0 to 10 pi, so we'll define that using the linspace function. And we're told that C equals 5, which will be a constant in our formulas. We can then go and define X, Y and Z. Just correct that error, a missing bracket. So I made a mistake there and overwrote the variable x with what I meant to assign to y. So I'm just going to redefine x correctly and define y. Now I can use the plot3 function in a very similar fashion to the plot function that we've used previously. And you'll see another deliberate mistake there. I typed plot instead of plot3. We get a plot of a spherical helix. So part B is a sine wave on a sphere and we have some constants to define and also T to define between 0 and 2 pi. And we'll just use the up arrow to reuse our plot3 function from part A. So question 2 is all about using the built-in function surf to plot surfaces in 3D space. So part A is plotting a sine surface. So the first thing we'll do is define u and v according to the question, which is ranging between 0 and 2 pi. Now we're going to use the mesh grid function on our vectors u and v to create a grid of points that we can then calculate x, y and z from. So the output of mesh grid is going to be u and v, so it's going to overwrite our vectors with some new matrices. And our input is the vectors that we've just created, u and v. So before I execute this command, if you look in the workspace, you'll see our vectors u and v are row vectors containing 50 elements. Now after I execute the command, u and v are going to turn into matrices of 50 by 50 points that we can then plot our function onto. So now we can calculate x, y and z. And now we're ready to plot our surface using the surf function. And we should label our axes and title them as per normal. We're also told to use the shading interp command, which basically just improves the shading of the graph for display purposes. The last thing we're asked to do is add a color bar to the plots. And that's very useful because it provides an easy visualization of the values of Z. And we do that by just issuing the color bar command.
and the result is a sine surface plot. Now if you click on the icon in the toolbar that's labelled rotate, you can then rotate your plot into different orientations to look at it. And when you're finished, you can use the tools menu and reset view to take you back to the original view. So part B is done in a similar fashion. This time we're plotting a spring in 3D space and we have some constants to enter as well. So firstly, we use the mesh grid function to redefine U and V. And then we calculate X, Y and Z. We can then use the up arrow to retrieve the plot command from the previous example. And the result is a spring in 3D space. So finally part C is plotting an elliptic torus. and the result is an elliptic torus. This production is copyright, the University of Edinburgh.